Well, it's my pleasure to be joined by Janae Wright, the CEO and founder of Primus Business Management. Janae, thanks for taking time to talk. Thank you, I appreciate it. So Janae, we got, uh, we got some exciting news. Your business, Primus Business Management, is turning 20 in the very near future coming up. That's really yes. exciting. Now I did a little research, so I wanted to find out what percentage of businesses make it to 20 years. Entrepreneur Magazine has a really good article on this. 70%, 70% of businesses don't make it to 10 years. Correct. And you're making it to 20. So you are easily in the top, you know, 30% of businesses, probably even less than that, frankly. So let's start by congratulations and Thank tell you. me all about Primus. What do you do at Primus Business Management? Thank you. I mean, we are really excited, right? 20 years, it's a, it's a lot. There's a lot okay. of experience, a lot of information that we've gathered over the years and really push it towards helping small business and medium sized businesses really grow their business. So Primus Business Management is a outsourced management firm. So we help small businesses, medium sized businesses with their accounting, their HR management. Uh, we have virtual assistants and we also have a mm -hmm. business advisory program. So our goal is really about going inside organizations and helping them really grow out their business, give the owner much more time to refocus really on why they started the business and leaving some really good um, practical uh, transactional work to out the outside specialists. Well, you know, I'm going to come back to unpack some of that, but you set up my next question, which is, why did you start your own business? Why, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? What drives you? you no, know, it's funny. Like some people have these great ideas of why they want to start a business. Mine was more, I think, where most people are. Right? Something happened. I, I, low, I couldn't find a job, so I started a company. For me, it was, I started, I graduated school in 2001, you know, right at September 11th, I'm in New York. All of the financial um, firms at that time, because of what happened, were, you know, downsized, leaving New York City. So there was really no jobs for me, right? I have a degree in economics. I did minoring in business. So there was really no jobs for me. So I started actually just helping small businesses in my neighborhood, doing their bookkeeping, helping them with their computers. And that kind of like, you know, boulder down the hill kind of situation that grew into what Primus is today of really just growing out and helping people be, um, grow their business. Now, that's interesting. You mentioned the bookkeeping, the real practical pieces, but you also mentioned the computers and the technology. Tell me a little bit more about that. You know, you have obviously that skill set. How is that important? And, and how did you find that that was the marriage of, of the two things? So it's, it's interesting fact, right? I think... What people look at today is they see technology as the front of what businesses are supposed to do. I see technology as the assistant to what business is supposed to do, right? And that's how I started my business. I've been in computers. I've probably built my first computer when I was 13. So understanding uh, how to use computers and how to use technology was very important for me to put that with the accounting skills. And what that helped us do was create systems, create um, procedures and protocols that that use technology to, in, to, to enhance the bookkeeping skills and enhance all the things we do. So for us, it's not technology is not first. The knowledge base of what we do comes first and technology has really helped us enhance that work. That's really interesting, right? So you lead with the expertise and the technology supports that. Exactly. Interesting, I, I wanna dig into that a little bit. You know, um, as a business owner myself, not a bookkeeper or CPA or <laughs> Lord, Lord knows you don't want me doing any of that. But, you know, I am familiar with the change in technology in the bookkeeping space over the years, especially with something like QuickBooks or, or digital software products that allow businesses to keep their books. You know, that's changed a lot over the years mm -hmm. from being desktop based to really now being cloud based. Tell yeah. me a little bit how you've seen that change and how you've kept pace with it. Sure, we, we utilize all those programs. My team are well-versed in QuickBooks, in Zero, all the new technology we keep on hands because we want to use them because it's, you know, the client chooses what program they want to use. Mm. So understand that like I said, it, it's, it's not, we're not fighting against it. We're running with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to make sure that it's really used in a proper way. But understand that as a business owner, if you have time to sit and do your books every single week, then something is wrong. You're not focused on growing your business. You're focused on recording your business. Our job is to help you record your business. And there's a there's an extra part, right? 
Bookkeeping is not just about tax, right? It's not just about putting numbers on the books. It's about understanding how you really track information, how I can actually look at your books and tell the story of your company over years. And using technology to make that work cleaner and clearer and more precise makes the story that I can tell for you a lot clearer. Every small business owner starting a business wanting to get to 20 years like you, you know, they should hear this loud and clear. And again, I, I'm only sort of preaching from experience, you know, um, working on your business, not in your business. Is, is it accurate to say that's what you help business owners do? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, there's, a, there's a story that I usually tell people about, you know, there's a, a, a business owner who every day I used to see her leave her office with these two big bags of, of paperwork, right? And every day coming back to coming back home, she comes back home with these same two big bags. I wonder, asked her, you know, what's in the bag? She said, well, you know, some counting, some HR stuff I have to do, some back office work I have to do office. So why are you bringing it home? Because I figured, you know, I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna feed the kids, I'm gonna hang out with my husband, and I'm gonna do it around nine, 10 o'clock, and I never get to, right? So for us is, Let's take those big bags off your hands, right? If you don't have to worry about your accounting, about the HR policy, and even about your, your administrative services, what would you do with that time, right? You can go after new clients. You can make sure your programs are pristine and giving the best quality possible. You're going to do as much social media networking and and, and, and face-to-face networking as possible, and that's going to grow your business, not the accounting. The accounting help you record it. The HR is to help show make sure your, your staff is happy and that you're in all regulations. But growing your business as a business owner is requiring you to actually look at your business, bring in new clients, network, and really grow out and give your name to your business to the world. Every business owner has, you know, a unique path to success or to fulfillment of what they're doing. And they they have to find what those footsteps are, you know, mm-hmm. but there are through lines, right? There's standard stuff that you have to do. You, you know, you do have to keep a clean set of books. You have to file your taxes. But what's interesting is that, you know, I, I like the phrase you use about recording, right? It's recording your business. And yes. by looking at that and using that information, it helps steer businesses, right? So this is the question I want to ask, you know, when you and your team come in to help a business, how does that happen, right? The phone rings, you, you have a new client, and, and you're going to start helping a business. What does that look like? So the first part is the conversation, right? So we have something where um, my, my there's, there's two experts in our car, but more than two, but there's two top people in our organization. One is on the accounting and business management side. The other one is on the HR and human youth research side. So in most cases, we'll both, the three of us, me, myself, the, the person on my team, my CEO, and the client will sit and talk hour, hour and a half, and we'll just talk about the business, talk about goals, talk about past, talk about present, and then we'll start to give advice on on things that we see as ways of really getting you to another level, really improving, right? In HR, there's so many potholes when you deal with HR management that, that most business owners don't know about. So we'll try to make sure we have the skills to close those holes up. We're looking at your financials. And if we're seeing things that are not recorded in an accurate way, we'll start to create systems, create um, information to help you really secure the information, the recording event. So from those two things, the two major things that comes out is one, an HR policy manual to let you know what needs to be done, and a, an accounting policy manual to let you know how we're going to be recording and what's important for us to, to be seen. So I think that that very first conversation, that very first meeting with the team really guides the rest of the year really guides the work that we're going to do and guides the information that you would expect from us as a client. Well, that sets up my next question, you know, so uh, a business engages you and your team. How integrated are you? You know, do you, is it just once a month? Are you there, you know, every other day working hand in hand? And obviously you, you must do quite a bit remotely because of we're still in the end, hopefully yeah. the end of a pandemic. So, you know, what does that experience look like with when you integrate with a business? Tell me about that. So Primus is a hundred percent remote organization. Right? We don't have an office. We are, my team is scattered all over the United States. We, me and my team speak almost every day, right? Where we jump on um, Zooms or we, have, we use Microsoft Teams. So we jump on Teams and we're always communicating whether it's a um, whether it's a video chat or just a regular chat. Um, so when we work with a company, our goal 
is to really integrate ourselves, right? We most times when you hear us talk, we talk about our partners, not our clients, right? Because uh-huh. I want you to feel I, what I my, the feeling I want you to have from me is that I'm your CEO, I'm your CFO, CEO, and I'm sitting next to you in the whole, in the hall, right? I'm in next to your office. So you send me an email, you can get responded to today. You send me a chat, you can get responded to today. You need your books get done on an ongoing basis. My team is always looking at the financials. It's connected to your your um, it's connected to your bank account. So we're recording entries as we go along. This is important, right? And it's important because the closer we are to you, the more information, the more advice, the more the more strategic information you get as an owner and a business person to really grow your business. Up. So this is not a this is not the old school way where I talk to you once a month. This is not a situation where you'll get a quarterly financial report. You will get live information as much as possible so that way you can really make on the spot decisions for your company. You know, I'm sure every business is probably a little different. I mean, some businesses are probably blowing up your phone and like, oh, I need to know this and I, I'm missing this piece of information or what do you think about this? And there's probably others that are a little less uh, connected to you. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, that's, that's very accurate. I think it's, it's kind of like, um, like it's, it's a downward slope, right? When you start with us, you're on top of the mountain. It's a whole bunch of information you need. You really ask a lot of questions every single day. But over time, because we're kicking out information to you on a regular basis before you even ask in a lot of cases, because like I said, the goal is for us to be partners and I can I know your business like the back of my hand, we'll be sending out information to you before you even request it. So by the time you're with us for like a year or two years or, or further, my clients who've been with us for like, you know, about 10 years now, <laughs> the conversation is probably once a month from them to us. From us to them, still <laughs> every other week. But from them to us, it's more like we're, we really become a really succinct organization and we know what's going on at all times. Yeah, right. You have the workflow together and then you're, you're moving right along forward. Correct. Now, before we talk about forward, because I have some questions about that, I, I want to look backwards, right? A um, little bit of a cliche question, but I, I love asking this, which is if you could advise yourself 20 years ago and uh, give yourself a piece of advice to the future you, the successful you know, business owner 20 years down the line, what would that advice be? So one of the statements I say a lot nowadays, right, is if you're not talking about your business, no one else is, right? That's the conversation I tell a lot of people. Uh, say, so say that again. Opinion. If you're not talking about your business, no one else is. No one else is, right? I love that. And the reason for that is, you know, my business grew organically. It grew from word of mouth. People were, you know, telling others about me, and that was great, right? I think part of that is I wasn't doing it as well, right? I wasn't out there networking mm-hmm. and really pushing my business because I was getting people coming to me. That, was, that, that helped us get to where we are. But to help us get to where we want to be, right? It's about that marketing. It's about that social media content. It's about being out there and talking about your business. Not just showing up. Don't just be you know, a, a member of an organization. Be the leader. Don't just be uh, a member of a group. Be on the board. Go out there and let everybody know who your business is because the more you talk and the more people feel your professionalism, even if it's not in the industry that you're in, once they realize the industry you're in, they can start looking at you at a different level. So when you talk about your business, I mean about you're going out there to be the best at it. You're going to go out there and you're going to be on every committee. You're going to be on every board. You're going to be the person that's always representing the company that you run every day. Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, that sounds like good advice for any young business owner, right? Yes. You know? So I I tell people that that's, it's great advice for not just business owners, right? If you are in a workforce, right? And you're not out there promoting the stuff that you've done for that company, then congratulations, you did it. Nobody knows it was you. So in any aspect of this world that you want to be the best at it, you need to keep verbalizing what you've accomplished Tell people what you're capable of doing and being, you know, put your hands up to join that committee, put your hands up to be on that board. So that way people will know who you are and you will climb the ladder at a much different rate than you ever would without doing it. Wow. You're approaching your 20th year. We're coming out of a very difficult time for lots of businesses, both big and small. I would imagine a lot of businesses who are struggling really need what you do, right? So who's blowing up your phone right now? You know, who, what are the businesses that are calling you saying, oh my God, Janae, help me, right? Who are those, who are those businesses? So it's, it's a lot. It's a different, different from, from nonprofits to for-profits. There's a lot of different people that's calling us right now. Mm-hmm. I think what we have noticed is, is 
the people who are really looking for us are these aggressive business owners who realize that, you know, my business is good. I can stay where I am and be happy, but that's not what they want. They want to grow their business. They want to create like generational wealth. They want to leave something back to their family. They have an exit strategy for their company. So they really want to get much more aggressive in the growth and the, the future look, the forward looking um, for their business. And those are people that spawn us the most because they realize that, you know, the way we talk about accounts and the way we talk about HR is not just transactional. It's about that, that advice and that growth jet trial for your company. So what's the future plans for Primus? Where are you taking this next 20 years? What's the path, you know? So the path is, is, is exciting, right? What we're doing is we're going into the advisory book, right? Um, right? And when I say advisory, I'm talking about really looking at your books, looking at your financials, and really helping you make decisions based on that. I think for the last 19 years, what we were was a purely transactional organization. We did your bookkeeping, we did your HR management, we helped you schedule things, we made sure that your company was running really distinct and succinct and, and, and clear. What we're gonna do going forward is take that information, take all that transactional history that we have and start to actually look at it in a, in a forward-looking men, um, uh, mentality. So we've created a, uh, a website, something that we designed called Primus Perk. So Perk stands for Primus uh, Executive Reporting and Consultation Program. What this program is, you get the hour and a half advisory with uh, a team leader, which allows you to either meet, you know, once a week, semi-monthly or monthly. You get a dashboard, uh, online dashboard of KPI. So you can see, you know, your cash flow rate, your run rate, your burn rate. You can see the profitability margin, all that in one place on a daily basis. You can see it every single day if you want to. You can get, you get an email every week to show you where you are. But these are the kind of things that, that turn you from a level-headed business owner to I'm trying to build a firm business owner. And that's where I want people to start taking a business. It's not, it's no longer like, you know, we're going to make enough money to, to feed the kids. We can make enough money to feed the grandkids. And that's where I want people to look at their business. That's a great way to put it. Wow. Well, listen, uh, Janae Wright, CEO and founder of Primus Business Management. Congratulations. It's no Thank small you. feat making it to 20 years and you've got a great plan moving forward. And frankly, I think a lot of businesses need what you do right now. It's a tough time and people need yes. some support. And they need expertise. So thanks for speaking with me and congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it.